that would mean that would mean that would mean no that word is b that word is not mean that word is b that makes sense for the grammar that i use later in the sentence b b b b b Yu -Gi -Oh! double progression trouble is a series created by myself jesse j plays co-starring the lovely sophie apparently it is based on absolutely nothing because the idea of a Yu -Gi -Oh! progression series is an original thought as of now, we've just released episode 3 of the series, and I figured it would be a good time to just make a video with all the rules we've decided on thus far clearly laid out. Ready? Let's go! Each week on Double Progression Trouble, Sophie and I use the YGO Pro Deck Pack Opening Simulator to open a total of 48 packs of Yu-Gi-Oh cards divided between two different sets, moving in chronological order throughout the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. This means by the end of the series, we will have opened at least one box or 24 packs of every core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set ever released. From these cards, we will build a few decks and duel each other a couple times. Important thing to note, there is no side deck. That's right, to give us more freedom to explore our collection, we are allowed to change every single card in our deck between games if we so desire, rather than just limiting ourselves to the 15 card side deck traditionally allowed in a match of Yu-Gi-Oh. The reason we chose to play this series without a side deck is that the card pool goes through some changes between each game. After game one, both players are allowed to use one band to take problematic cards out of the card pool. Also after game one, the winning player gets to open four packs of cards from any set we have opened up to that point, while the loser is allowed to open two consolation packs. The winner of game two gets to open another two packs. The game two loser doesn't get any more packs, but can still reevaluate her deck. If an episode winner is declared after game two, this results in a shutout and a couple things happen. First of all, obviously the person who didn't win two games loses the episode. She is allowed to use one extra ban. In addition, she has the option to challenge her opponent to a Game 3. The winner cannot reject a Game 3 challenge from the loser. In this case, the winner of Game 3 gets to open another two packs. This gamble can either allow the losing player to recoup on some lost pack advantage if she can manage to take a game, or she can screw it up and leave the winner with an even larger pool of packs. If Game 3 is determinative of who wins the episode, no additional packs are open for winning Game 3. In this series, bans are divisible. What that means is, when you have the opportunity to use a ban, you can either ban one card, limit two cards, or semi-limit four cards. You can mess around with math as well and limit one, semi-limit two. Bans always happen after game one, sometimes after game two. Both duelists also have two extra bans they can use per arc. Extra bans can happen between any game whenever we want. Bans must always be used on cards that have been released in a pack we've opened. No preemptive dad bans. Double Progression Trouble will be divided into arcs of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and trading card game. That means after we're done with the DM era, a winner will be declared based on who has the most points, and our scores will be reset to zero before moving into the next era. Each arc, we will do pack opening episodes until we're out of packs, and then we will do <gasps> a season finale episode where we will <gasps> use an actual side deck and play an actual match of Yu-Gi-Oh! No additional packs are open during the finale, no additional cards will be banned. This means the card pool for the finale is set in stone at the end of the previous episode. Any episode won before the finale is worth one point. Winning the finale is worth three points. The player with the most points after the finale wins the season. Additionally, both players get to start the next season by opening one extra pack for each point they accrued in the previous season. Draws are a fucking nightmare that hopefully won't happen, but just in case, here is our plan. We're never gonna do a double progression trouble where we play four games. That would probably be a long episode and create a lot of pack opening questions. Instead, I'm gonna say that a draw counts as a win for both players. That means a draw in game one means both players get four packs, and a draw in game two means both players get two packs. If there is a draw in a post-shutout game 3, both players, again, get two packs. 
If a draw causes both players to win their second game simultaneously, that means we both win the episode and we each get a point. I'm also going to say anytime there is a draw, both players get a ban after the game. If there does seem to be a self-destruct button or something similar in the format that's a problem, I'd like it to only be a problem once. If the draw occurs during game one, this draw ban is in addition addition to the game 1 ban, meaning that yes, both players get two bans if someone pulls off a draw in game 1. This is kind of interesting. What do we do if we run into an arc with an odd number of packs? Kinda defeats the purpose of it being double progression trouble if something like that can ruin the math. This question isn't actually relevant in the DM era. For right now, we're working with a nice even number. 14 sets of Yu-Gi-Oh cards were released during the Duel Monsters era. For those of you keeping track at home, this means Season 1 of DPT will run 8 episodes, including the finale. For future seasons, here's the idea I've come up with. Since this isn't relevant in DM, this is by no means set in stone, and feel free to let me know your feelings in the comments about a rule set like this one I'm about to describe popping up in the future, whether those feelings are positive or negative. Basically, the idea is Odd Number Buffet. That means, in our final pack opening episode of the season, we first open 24 packs of the final set of the era, and then we open another 24 packs consisting of at least one pack from every set of that arc. Provided that we meet those requirements, the rest of the packs we open are entirely our choice, provided that they are, again, from that arc. So if we were to apply that to the DM era, that would be 14 of our 24 open packs consisting of one pack from each set, and then 10 remaining packs we can split up however we want. Maybe we want to do 5 Spell Ruler, 5 Invasion of Chaos. Maybe we really want to gun for that Trihorn Dragon and just open 10 Legend of Blue Eyes packs. The choice is ours. Between arcs, Sophie and I will meet up and create an entire deck's worth of banned cards. We each pick 20 cards from the era just passed and ban them outright. No dividing bans either. Here, we actually have to choose to remove cards from the format completely. I want to do this to allow us to focus more on the new hotness in each subsequent arc of DPT. As funny as it is to be a year and a half deep into a progression series and still owning your opponent with Dark Hole, I think there's value to letting the DM staples lie in DM and so on. I want to thank everyone who has been supporting DPT up to this point. Your positivity and excitement for new episodes just adds to the enthusiasm I already have for doing this series with Sophie. If you enjoy your DPT, or you found this video informative, or you stuck around because you find me compelling, consider leaving a like and giving that subscribe button a smack. That's right, baby, I want you to smack that sub. Keep an eye out for DPT Episode 4 coming to this page Friday, May 20th. I'll see y'all then.